Hello everyone, welcome back aboard the Night Train. Thank you for tuning in for another video. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and comment as the video goes on. It's all really helpful for helping the channel grow and I really do want to hear your thoughts about everything railway related that I'm doing and covering on the channel. So in my last video you would have seen that I got the layout loops finally wired down and pinned down and all the baseboard joints sorted and we actually got some trains running around the railway itself. However, we are going to jump back in time a little bit because there was something that I wanted to get done before I got all the layout boards up and joined and sorted together, and that was hanging planes above the layout itself. I really wanted to utilise some of that space between the layout and the roof, and I thought showing some airborne models would be a really great way to fill this space and to give something visually interesting above the trains themselves. So I formulated a low-cost, almost invisible plan to get these aircraft hovering above the layout. And this involved nothing more than some screw eyes and some old fishing line to really get these aircraft off the ground, sorry, pun intended, completely. It was fairly quick and easy, just involving some spares out of an old toolbox and out of my dad's fishing gear. And I thought I'd show you how it all came out in the end and what I managed to achieve in this grandiose space above the layout itself, so check it out. So for hanging the line for suspending the aircraft I needed nothing more than two screw eyes I pulled out of my spares toolbox and some transparent monofilament shock leader fishing line which I took from my dad's fishing kit. The first order of business was to measure where the screw eyes would go in the curtain pole and also the door frame to ensure that both screw eyes were positioned at the same height. Once measured, I drilled the holes and screwed these into place. For tying the shock leader to the screw eyes, I used a fisherman's blood knot for both ends, which I'm demonstrating here using a coloured braid that you can actually see. To tie a blood knot, you need to put the line through the eye of the loop or screw eye that you're using, and then wrap this around the line four times. Take the tag end of the line and pass this back through the loop of the line and then back on itself through the second loop that this is made. And then pull the line tight to form a knot that when under strain just pulls itself tighter. Using this knot I tied one end of the monofilament shock leader around one screw eye and then stretching it tight I did the same thing with the second screw eye on the door frame. There is some natural elasticity in the monofilament so don't worry if the line is not completely taut. Some lubrication will help make this knot even stronger when pulling it tighter and once you're happy with it trim off the tag end. Our first prisoner for hanging is this small Thunderbird 1 model which I took from a Carlton key ring that I got off eBay. For hanging these off the monofilament I use these pre-tied thinner monofilament hooks to nylon produced by Drennan, also from my dad's fishing kit. These come with a loop already tied on the end and a hook tied to the other. These hooks are very small and all but invisible once you've got them where you want them to be. In order to prevent the sharp tip or barb of the hook from cutting the monofilament, the first thing to do is to take a pair of cutters and to cut the sharp tip off of the hooks. Warning to my younger viewers, please don't attempt to do this unattended. Please ask for assistance of an adult if you're looking to do this kind of thing on your own layout. Hooks can be very sharp and can easily get caught in your skin or any other soft body parts. So please take care when handling these small sharp items. With the hook trimmed, I then slip the hook through the loop at the other end of the line and pass this bigger loop around the aircraft, pulling it tighter in the right position to balance the aircraft when it's in the air. Once I was happy with the positioning of this around Thunderbird 1 and to make sure that it was balanced, I then hooked this over the monofilament suspended across the layout. I also managed to get hold of a Thunderbird 2 Carlton keyring as well and did a similar thing. 
However, Thunderbird 2, being the awkward shape that it is, required a little bit more balancing. So for this, I had to drill out the existing hole that was used for the key ring and drill in a second hole and thread the thin line through multiple times in order to get the aircraft balanced. I also had a go at hanging my mini Ertl Harold as well to give a sense of perspective for my Thomas characters as Harold soaring high above them is one of the things that was really neat to see in the show. So for this I wrapped the line around the base beneath his helicopter blades and this balanced him quite nicely and allowed me to hook him straight up on the monofilament line. And it was as simple and easy as that. All three aircraft are now hanging high above the layout looking really small by comparison to all the trains that will be running around underneath them. So there we are. I'm really happy with how it turned out actually because from most angles you can't actually tell there's any fishing line there at all. The planes do look like they are just hovering in place above the layout boards. It was a very simple and effective method that still allows for the aircraft to be taken down very easily and replaced with something else and you can actually move them across the layout to the exact position that you want them to be in. So I'm very happy that I have that flexibility in the system. Using aircraft of a smaller scale as well really allows for a sense of perspective between the trains on the ground and everything going up in the air. So if anyone else is looking to try this themselves above their own layout, I do highly recommend going for those really small, minute aircraft to really give that sense of scale across your entire diorama. One thing to bear in mind though is fishing lines come with different braking strains and will support different levels of stress and force on them. So if you're looking at hanging any large die cast planes or anything like that, I'd say avoid these where possible, maybe go with a plastic kit as an alternative, or if there's nothing available then go for a higher braking strain monofilament line that you know will hold up under tension and support the weight of the models. You may also need some more hook and nylon strings to really support a model at multiple points, so it's a little bit of trial and error depending on what you're trying to hang above the layout. The last thing you want is for a heavy die-cast Lancaster bomber, for example, to fall down and land on top of a £200 train. That would definitely be a very bad day for everybody involved. So with the line now in place, I'm sure there will be plenty more hanging models to come from me and I'll switch these out above the layout as and when I feel like it. I may have particular models around a certain theme that I want to hang up some days and other days I can swap them out for something else. But it's going to be really interesting and adding a little bit more play value to the scenery of the layout. So stay tuned and let me know if there's any flying models that you'd like to see flying through the airspace that I've got in this railway room. So with that complete and the main loops down and wide, the next thing I'm going to be doing is moving on to scenery on the baseboard itself. First of all, I'm going to tackle the farmyard area in the back corner, finishing the buildings, fitting them out with lighting and doing various bits over there. And then I'm also going to be working on the underwater scenery in the cutout corner as well trying to make a little underwater diorama that can be used for various things as well. So if you're itching to see how these come along, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell for notifications of when I upload more videos of my exciting progress in the future. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the underwater scene especially turns out, as that's going to be quite tricky to model both the surface level of the water and then also the riverbed itself, but it's going to be a lot of fun I think trying to really really capture that underwater atmosphere. Thank you again for tuning in, I hope you like seeing the Thunderbirds and Harold in action, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.